It's not important that I'm wearing a dress shirt with Spider-Man pajama pants right now. What is important is that if you're using a carnivore diet, you're very likely either making mistakes or your body is malfunctioning in a way that is restricting the results you could be seeing on a carnivore diet. So in this video, not only are you going to understand those problems, you're going to understand steps you can take to correct them. You don't want to miss this. T.C. Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So if you're using carnivore and not really seeing the results that you want to see, or maybe you're just thinking about getting started, I'm going to go over five of the most common mistakes that can really put up some roadblocks and restrict the results that you're going to see. And the biggest one that I see is not eating enough fat. So a carnivore diet is really just a subset of a ketogenic diet when a person is using it correctly. Because a carnivore diet is really basically a zero carb diet. So when you're not bringing in any type of glucose for the body to use for fuel, you really want the body to have access to ketones so it can use that for fuel. Now the body can turn some protein into glucose through gluconeogenesis and it's probably going to do that while you're using a carnivore diet but you really want to make sure that you're getting enough fat so that your body can use fat for fuel. So we don't want to eat lean meats on a carnivore diet. You really want to eat more fatty cuts. You really don't want to have a chicken breast. You want to have chicken legs or chicken thighs and just you want to have a ribeye instead of a filet. You really want to go for the fattier versions of the meats that you're eating. Now, in my opinion, you can always use things like, you know, egg yolks and some butter on that meat as well. Don't view it like, oh, I can only eat steak when I'm on carnivore. You can add other things that are going to increase that fat level to make it a little bit easier for you. And to go along with this topic, I really like to see people either use carnivore or not. I don't want to see somebody like, well, I'm going to do carnivore for breakfast, but I'm going to have a chicken pot pie for lunch. That's going to create a lot of trouble. That's going to cause weight gain because you're eating higher fats at some meal, but then telling the body, hey, you should use glucose instead. So if you're going to do carnivore, do carnivore. And if you're not, then don't. Now, it is okay to cycle carnivore. I cycle carnivore from time to time, and sometimes I'm not doing carnivore. So you can cycle it for days or weeks at a time. You just don't want to go back and forth and eating carnivore one way and carbs at another meal, and that's really going to create a lot of trouble. So the second problem is not including organ meats. There's a lot of people that are really against carnivore because they feel like, well, you, there's nutrients in plants that you really need. But the animals that you eat on carnivore are eating those plants. And when you access their organ meats, you can access a lot of those nutrients that you may not have been able to get from their muscle meat. So I really like to see people include organ meats like liver and heart and kidney. And you can even do things like liver worst and, and maybe you're thinking, well, why would I want liver worst? I don't, I don't want something that's the worst of its category. I don't even think I would like liver best. But it's really not so bad. And there's also tricks that you can do. There's a company that I buy from that has ground beef that they sell. That's a higher fat ground beef, higher than you can usually get in a grocery store. And they also have ground beef that includes organ meats like heart and liver and stuff like that. So if eating liver or something really makes you gag a little bit, you can get this ground beef that has it mixed in there already and that kind of makes it, it's almost like training wheels. It makes it a little bit easier to eat some of these organ meats. And I, you can get a grinder. I bought a grinder and I was like, I'm just going to do it myself and I ground it up and it, it was not fun. I didn't like it. So I just buy it already done because I'm a little bit lazy in, in that regard. But there's options and if, the, if you just can't consume it, you can also buy capsulated organ meats. There's companies out there that do grass-fed liver pills and you can find those on Amazon. I'm not going to say a brand or anything, but there's lots of options out there to get good organic or grass-fed organ meat in a capsule so you can just take that and you don't have to actually eat it. But that can be very important to get you all the nutrients that you need when you're just eating meat. Now, a big problem is a lot of people will use flavorings like sauces and marinades and rubs and if you're going to use those things, you really got to look at the ingredients. Don't just trust that, oh, they're making this for carnivore people. Obviously, they know what they're doing. You got to read the ingredients and make sure that there's not something like, you know, natural flavors, because that can mean pretty much anything. So watch what you're putting on your food. You really have to inspect. If you go to a restaurant, you really got to ask them. You can pretend, hey, I'm allergic to things. I'm, a, I'm allergic to sugar. 
Sugar makes me, my head explode. So make sure there's no sugar. And when you say allergy, they're gonna check that. So just be real careful about the ingredients of the things that you're using. Mistake number four is not supplementing with electrolytes. You really wanna put electrolytes into your system when you're on a carnivore diet. Now, if you have really high blood pressure, you might not wanna dump a whole bunch of stuff in the system, but for most people, they're going to need to supplement with some electrolytes. And the reason is when insulin goes very low, that causes a lot of people to pee out more minerals. And when minerals go too low, it's gonna create a lot of symptoms and a lot of problems. So you really wanna supplement with electrolytes. And the other thing is it's really important is that you're digesting in a way that you can get the minerals out of the food that you're eating. So a lot of people don't have proper digestive function and that means that they're not really breaking their food down into those elemental nutrients and they don't have the ability to assimilate the minerals in their food. So even when that's the case, even if you're supplementing, a lot of people can't really assimilate the minerals that they're supplementing with when there are digestive malfunctions. So that can be a really big thing and that kind of takes us into mistake number five, which is people working against their body. Now, we need to understand that there is no diet that is right for every person because we all process foods differently. So if somebody's having these digestive malfunctions and they're not making enough stomach acid to even break down protein, well, how, how well do you think it's gonna go when they go on a diet that's just all protein? It's not gonna go well. So we really wanna work with our body instead of just forcing a diet onto our body because all the cool kids are doing it. So we really need to look at what's going on with digestive malfunctions. If you're having any type of digestive symptoms at all, any burping or bloating or constipation or diarrhea or nausea or acid reflux or even skin or acne issues, all of those are signs that you're not digesting your food correctly. So if you're having any of those issues, you really wanna understand how to correct those problems. So don't fall into this diet religion trap where everybody gets so excited about a diet because so many people are seeing such great results and maybe you've even tried carnivore and you saw some great results initially, but that doesn't mean that over time, a diet can't create imbalances and troubles and now all of a sudden trouble's showing up, I'm having these symptoms that weren't there before, but it can't possibly be the carnivore diet because I felt so much better when I started that. So don't fall for that diet religion thing where you defend the diet when anybody talks about, about it. Remember that you are an individual and we all process foods differently. So we need to understand if there's digestive malfunctions, we need to fix those. And we also need to understand imbalances to watch for because there's people that are dealing with imbalances that a carnivore diet can actually magnify and make worse. And even for some people who aren't dealing with those imbalances, over time, a carnivore diet has the ability to create those imbalances. So you really want to understand how your body's operating. Are you dealing with any of those issues? And if so, what steps can you take to correct those so that you can continue using a carnivore diet? So what I want you to do right now is jump over and watch our video on when is carnivore a mistake to understand the three most common problems that can create trouble with carnivore. Because if you can correct them, then you can really magnify the results that you can see on carnivore. I can't wait to hear about your results.